All right, so what is up guys? In this video, I want to go over what visibility modifiers are in Kotlin. And let's just get started immediately by creating a sample project because I've tried to record this far too many times without getting anywhere. So the first thing we are going to do is create a new class and we're gonna write Kotlin class. And here we will type in fruit. And the first thing we're gonna do in here is change this to an open class and add a constructor to this fruit. So we're gonna add this fruit and it's gonna be of type string. And then immediately under, we are going to write an init block. And inside here, we will add a print line statement, which says, you chose a fruit. And it will add the fruit that we've added to the constructor. And then down here, we are going to write open function, say hello. And we will add a print line statement of our class saying hello. So we'll write fruit says, Hello. All right, and for this function, you may have noticed we have the open keyword, and this allows us to use it and inherit from it. And another thing to bring up is, if you're coming from Java, you may be familiar with the concept of adding the public keyword everywhere to make sure that a function or a class is public. But in Kotlin, if you do not specify that it is private, it will automatically be considered public. So you never really have to add the public keyword anywhere because all classes and functions that are not specified as private become public. So as you can see here, we have an open public function that says hello. And right below that, we are going to write one that's called private function, and that's gonna be hello private. And we will add a print line statement, and this one will say, I say hello privately. Now, as you can see, we have defined this as private, which means we will not be allowed to use this anywhere else besides in this class. It is linked to this class and you cannot inherit from it. And then after that, we have the protected visibility modifier. So if we write protected open function, say hello protected. And then inside here we write, I say hello while I am protected. And essentially the protected keyword is exactly the same as the private keyword with the exception that protected is allowed to be inherited from. So you can use it in other classes that inherit it from fruits as opposed to this private function here, which is only allowed to be used in the fruits class. And it is also possible to use this protected keyword for uh, values. So we can write protected open value carrots, and we're going to assign that the string of carrots. But anyways, that's all we're gonna do for our fruit class. Now we are going to create a class that can inherit from it, a subclass, if you will. So we will call it class subclass. And that will take a fruit as a string and it will inherit from our fruit class, which requires the fruits in the constructor. And the first thing we are going to do is demonstrate that we can actually use this carrot value anywhere in our subclass. We will write value item, equals carrot. And one more thing, you only need this open keyword if you want to override the value of carrot. So for example, if you want to override it, you just type in carrot and it will say override value carrot and it will create a getter for you. But without that open keyword, you will not be able to override this value. And yeah, that's just a small thing to note when developing in Kotlin, but we will continue without that open keyword because we do not need to override carrot. Instead, we are going to override the function say hello protected. And to do that, all we have to do is write, say hello, protect it, and it will let us override it. So instead of writing, I say hello while I'm protected, you can also just write print line and say this, say hello protected function has been overridden. And that will completely replace what we wrote here with what we put here. So if we just left it with the super keyword, it will call whatever we put in here and everything will stay the same. So if you want to keep what you have in here, and add some extra text, you can definitely just add it below. And yeah, that's all. So add extra stuff. And then the next thing to show you is that you can still use the say hello function because it is open and it is public. So if we just write override function say hello, it will let you do that. And we will just leave it to super dot say hello so we don't have to write inside anything inside there. And the final thing to show you is that we cannot really access the hello private function. So if we just type in hello private, it will not allow us to do that. But anyway, let's go back to our main function. And inside here, we are going to create and obstantiate an object of fruit. So we'll write value fruit equals fruit. And we are going to write apple. Now we're gonna write fruit dot say hello. And the say hello function is the one that we found over here. So you will see that we cannot access the other two because first of all, one is private and the other one is protected. So if we write again, fruit 
dot say hello, you'll see that there's no say hello privately and there's no say hello protected. These functions are completely unavailable when it comes to accessing them outside of the fruit class. But now let's create our subclass. Let's write value subclass and that's going to equal subclass. And of course we need to pass in a fruit, so we'll write orange. And let's just type in subclass to see what we can do. And you will see here we only have access to the item and to say hello. That is because we created an item which has not been specified as protected or private, which means we can use it as public. And that just takes the value from caret, which is protected. So we cannot use that one, but we will use item. Then we have an overridden function which says hello protected. And since this function is protected, we cannot use it anywhere else besides inside this class and this subclass right here. So if you wanted to use this, you would have to write open function, say hello, protected. And now if we go back here, we can write say hello protected and it will allow us to use that. Anyway, let's click on play and see what we get. So the first thing that happens is we chose an apple in our fruit class and we print lines that you chose an apple and then it says fruit says hello because the thing we did immediately after that is say hello. Then we created a subclass which says you chose an orange. That is because we inherited from our fruit class so we use the same initializer. And then it says I say hello while I'm protected which is a false statement because we removed the protected visibility modifier. And finally it says add extra stuff because we decided to override the function of say hello protected which means we added this extra print line statement. And there's actually one more visibility modifier that I should go over and this one is called internal. And we will just use it in the example of orange and we're going to create a string named orange. And the reason I was quite reluctant to bring up the internal visibility modifier is because it is used only in modules and it depends if you have a multi-module project whether you should use this or not because essentially with this internal value we can use it in all our classes as long as it's in the same module. And modules are a completely different discussion but uh, it's good to know in case you are very familiar with modules that this can prevent this value of orange from being leaked out to other modules. But I can't really go too deep into that because I myself am not really familiar with modules and that is 100% up to you. I have never used this keyword in Android Studio but I'm sure that someday there will be a moment that I might go ahead and use the keyword internal. But anyways, I hope that wasn't too confusing and you got a general idea of how to use visibility modifiers. Thanks for watching as always. I will see you guys in the next video. Ciao.